Welcome back to Fixing the Money Thing, and we are talking to Steve and Mindy Higgins about the chaos that existed in their life due to debt and stress, and now how the kingdom of God has changed it. We're going to hear the rest of that story right now, Steve. And you left us at the break when you said that a counselor, a marriage counselor, said that uh, there's no hope for you except maybe you need to plug into a local church. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. And so that's what we did. It, it, our first step was really just kind of listening to Christian radio. We, we, we at least could figure we needed to cut off some things from our life that were hurting the marriage, that were doing that. So we, we started to do that, but we didn't really have any direction for a local church. But basically uh, at a banquet, a guy came up to us and kind of barged his way into our life and, and uh, encouraged us to try out a local church, which we did. And uh, we started hearing some things quite different than what we'd ever heard before. Um, that first, very first service. So you're talking about Faith Life Church. Faith Life right Church here, yes. specifically, yes. And so when we, the first time we visited, um, both of us were there kind of out of duty and obligation to at least give it a try before we just called it quits altogether. Yeah. And we, it was really at the hands of a, a 10 year old boy at that time. That your that, son, your son. My son, Carter, yes. And that's where uh, we, we, had, we were having a fight in front of him. Should have never done that, but we were done. We were finished and he grabbed each of our hands and he said, you guys aren't going anywhere. And so it was that moment, that, that thread of, of what our son was that, that said, okay, we'll give it a try. So we, we came to Faith Life Church and the very first service, of course, uh, being saved, the Holy Spirit immediately pressed down on me. And I just, I remember just clinching the back of that chair, trying to survive that first service. Yeah. And uh, when, we, when we got out of service, uh, we got into the car and I said, well, what did you think? And she said, it was fine. And she said, what did you think? I said, it's all right. And we looked back to Carter and said, what'd you think? And he just screamed out, it was amazing. It was like Disney World. They, it's incredible that we sang songs. We did this, we're learning so much. And I'm like, great, we're stuck. Now, now, we've, got to go, <laughs> now we've got to go back to yeah. this place. And so it was the second or third time. And finally, you know, finally then I realized this was, this was the answer. Uh, you know, the, the, what we were hearing, we heard stories that were similar to our story that we could relate to. Uh, as you and uh, Pastor Drenda spoke, and other families, we could hear evidence of, uh, hey, these people get where we're at. And God truly is the solution, uh, not in a religious sense, but in a true relationship sense. And so I, I basically snuck out, uh, got, the, got her picking up Carter and the other boys, and I snuck back in. And I came, came to you and just said, I, I need some prayer and I need, to, I need to make a decision to do something. And so we, we prayed together and that was the moment. That's where we started the course to say, okay, we're gonna get this thing going. So as we began to learn, uh, we realized we had a lot of changes to make and we had a lot of things that we needed to do. So, Mindy, now, let's, your perspective of that moment, um, change had to happen. Yeah. And so spiritually, when was it you realized, wait, this is a spiritual issue, we gotta deal with this? Well, the chaos overtook everything and the depression was just so overwhelming that nothing we've done so far had worked, obviously. Mm -hmm. And so something needed to be changed. And like you said, we, we grew up, we're Christians. We grew up knowing better, but we didn't not understand and didn't know. We didn't have a relationship. And, and so that's what um, your teachings, that's what we started to plant seeds and started just resonating with us and we just realized this is the only way and this this is the way and our kids we wanted better for them and th just the change in our kids alone it, it was it was incredible so life began to come back hope, yes. hope, hope came, came back, back. Hope <laughs> yeah came back. so what, what began to change um with your marriage first off i mean what happened there you began to to tune into the spirit of god Sure. Well, I mean, there was there was some initial change there, but we were still operating very much individually. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we really were. And and uh, basically what we we finally heard in a couple different services, it kind of drove us to the concept that we need to stop worrying about each other. Yes. And we need to worry about God. We need to worry about our personal relationship. And that was the amazing thing as we listened to that and we drew closer to him. He drew us closer together. He changed our hearts. He, he, he took things out that were weighing us down and it was like you could see clearer. And I, I always tell people that, you know, when you're clean on the inside, you're free on the inside, vision begins to, to, yes. to, to there's hope. Vision yeah. begins to come up. And of course, vision is what propels life, you know, and it's the excitement, the joy of life. So how did that translate over into your financial life now when you 
started seeing these things happen in your marriage, your spiritual life. Sure. Well, that, at that, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, yes. Okay, at that point, we at least were on the same page that we want to start working together. And realizing that finances were the big challenge, we, we, I, had a, I had a regimen or system that we used to do where we would sit down with a notebook and we would list out all of our debts. And she didn't like to do it, so I had so I so, so I it, I had to kind of persuade her into the concept. So I'd take her to breakfast. Okay. So so we went to Bob Evans here in, in town in New Albany, and we were just sitting down there going over our budget. And trying, I was like this. <laughs> yes, that's right. Just trying to figure out because she really didn't want to know. Yeah. And I wanted her to know because I wanted some help carrying the weight. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's what we did. Uh, is we we were sitting going over the budget. And someone we'd, we'd known for a number of years, but walks in and he's walking around the room and he happens to look over our shoulder and says, hey, what are you doing? And, and I recognize him immediately. And uh, his name's John Kasich. He's now our governor here in the state of Ohio. Right. But I told him, I said, you know, we kind of caught up on what the status he said, what's how's your home building going? I said, it's done. We closed the factory. And so, the, you know, and he says, well, what are you doing here? And I said, well, we're, you know, trying to figure this out. I'm, I'm a banker now. She's you know, doing home inspections, uh, ironically looking at home, foreclosed homes. And, and, uh, and I, I said, we're just trying to figure out how to make it work. Well, little did we know that, you know, he was actually there for an interview. And so he was being interviewed as he was preparing to run, you know, run for governor in just a few weeks. And in his closing remarks of his second debate, he brought that up. And it was, in, so it made me think, why is he bringing this up? It's just our story. But it made me understand this is the story of a lot yeah, of people. Yeah, lots of people. Yeah. And, and so that's where we were. We were, you know, he asked me if I thought we were going to open the building business again. I said, I'm never going to do anything like that again. I don't even want to be in business. I'm not going to hire anybody. I don't want to build anything. And he said to me, now, hang on just a second. I need you to do that. <laughs> you know, I said, well, I'll tell you, I need you to build businesses again. That's how we get the economy going. Uh, he goes, you can't sit around on entitlement. You know, you got to get it. I said, well, I tell you what, you get elected governor and then we'll, I'll do my part. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, he became governor. So, so, so you're doing so, your part now. So now we're stuck. So now as we get into this, it was, it was kind of neat because it was the first thing we did begin to work on together to restore things. You know, individually, we, we knew we had to restore our relationship with God right. and make it new right. and, we, and make it better than it ever was. Yeah. But collectively, we're like, we're going to take this debt on together. And so we started working on that. Okay, for time's sake, I mean, I'd love to yeah. take a, I'd be, dig into this. <laughs> but for time's sake, okay, so you began to dig into it. And you had 21 open accounts. That's correct. You lost your half million dollars. Right. You barely held onto your house. And everything's, you know, late. Right. Uh, or behind, or they're closing the accounts, et cetera, et cetera. Right. At that point in time, did you think you'd ever be able to pay all that stuff off? No. We had just refinanced for 30 years, so we were scheduled to be out of debt at age 72 okay. when we could start saving for retirement. Was that exciting? No, yeah. that was hopeless. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So then, hopeless. You, what, then you got, to, you got to do it a lot quicker than that. How, sure. how long is it right now that you're, you saw through some wisdom and God's inspiration, you did some changes and you're out of debt now, and how long? Sure, we'll be completely out of debt except the mortgage at the end of this year. And then the mortgage, and the mortgage should, be, should be wrapped up next year. Yeah. That's, so that's and that'll be tough. five years instead of 30. So, wait, so you came from nothing, everything crashed, <laughs> marriage nothing. falling apart, <laughs> Negative nothing. playing Russian roulette who's going to commit suicide today, you know, which one of you, and now uh, there was no hope, and now you're five years completely out of debt, the marriage restored. Steve, I got to know what you did. <laughs> well, we went to a provision conference here, here at Faith Life Church, and uh, I, we couldn't go to all the classes. So I went to some, and she went to one, and she went to one from Forward Financial Group. <laughs> and they were gonna show people how to get out of debt. She says, well, we, we're trying to do it in our own strength. It's not working, so let's get some advice. I said, whatever you do, don't sign up for anything. Don't fill out a card. I don't want anybody to call. We have this, we're working on this. So she came bouncing down the steps with enthusiasm because she had signed up to have somebody <laughs> call our home. And <laughs> so nonetheless, uh, the representative called our home, collected some data, uh, not a lot of private detailed stuff, just some basic data. And I didn't really think there was a lot they could do. I mean, I ran a successful building company. I'd been in finances for years. What are they going to show me about getting out of debt? I really didn't think much of it. So after providing the information uh, in a very small amount, uh, in fact, our first number, they said, how much can you apply towards getting out of debt? I'm like, you didn't hear me. We're broke. And I gave him just a ridiculous number of $50. I said, you know what, I'll eat $50 less food. I can certainly afford to do that, you know. And when we met with the representative, 
she was actually almost disappointed because the initial plan showed that we wouldn't be out of debt for 11.9 years. She says, well, we'd like to show people out of debt in five to seven. Well, meanwhile, she almost had to strap us back down in our chairs because we were ecstatic. Instead of 30 years, we can be out of debt and 11 point that something. That counts your mortgage and everything. Yeah, that's yeah. everything. With over Max half credit cards. Yeah, <laughs> with a half a million dollars restored back in our account by 65. You know, remember, we were just going to be out of debt at 72 before. So we were ecstatic. That was, again, the first run at yeah. it. As we began to dig into it, learn some new concepts, some new ideas, the money coach began to work with us. They showed us very practically how we could be out of debt in seven years, just by making some simple changes in our food budgets and some other things. So. Steve, we're out of time. Yeah. <laughs> now listen, I say, say this, now that you heard Steve's story to this point, seven years, now five years out of debt, mortgage paid for, incredible. Uh, that can happen for you too. And uh, we're going to carry this on to tomorrow's program. You can tune in uh, the next program and learn more details about it. But our website will have all kinds of information about what we're talking about on the website. If you'll go to GaryXC.com, and we would love you to plug in and find out more about what he's talking about, how that can be done for you as well. And so go to GaryXC.com. And Steve and Mindy, I can't wait till the next program because I can tell this story is just starting to unravel in the sense of a good unravel. We can find out what's inside. And so I'm going to ask you to join us again tomorrow. And I want to thank you for being with us thank here you. on Fixing the Money Thing. God bless <laughs> both of you. And he is and he has. Yes. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.